Welcome to Nomad PHP Lightning Talks. I'm Joe Ferguson. Nomad PHP Lightning Talks are 10-minute talks that give a high-level overview or an in-depth look at a small portion of a PHP-related topic. Lightning Talks are a great way for new speakers to build their speaking resume and for long-time speakers to test drive a new talk idea. Right now we have Ian Littman. Tonight he's going to be talking about error handling in PHP. Please make sure you visit Joined In after the talk and leave Ian some feedback. Ian, I'm going to swap it over to you. Tonight I'm going to talk about error handling in PHP and basically preventing inst uh, instances where this happens. You generally don't want this to happen on your production site when you're serving up a request and all of a sudden you get some sort of parse error that you should have linted for or uh, a method call in a non-object or one of the other many fun and interesting errors that the PHP runtime may throw you. So let's go ahead and try and uh, resolve that with various things that don't necessarily involve grabbing a full stack framework that does this automatically. In fact, you may not want to, for example, cast all your notices into error exceptions and then um, fail out of your entire application because Symphony decided that, well, it's a notice. We should do that. So that screen that I just showed you it's good if you're, you know, returning a 204, no content on an API, but as I said, bad for if you're having an internal server error because it tells the end user absolutely nothing other than you know, maybe refresh the page and see if the thing loads. So what we're going to cover is, well, handling errors, whether that's a fatal, an exception, a non-fatal, or some mixture of all three. You probably also want to know when you're site 500, so we'll talk about briefly how to hook in error handling with logging and reporting. Uh, as an example, uh, on a production site that I admin uh, and code on, if the server 500 is so on an API call, I'll get a text message and an email indicating what I need to do next. So, and this code, while not available on GitHub quite yet, will be. Do not copy and paste it into your own application. Look at what it does and build from the ground up a solution that works for you. Again, this code is not in production. It is not production ready. You have been warned. So let's have a very, very basic application here. You've got your index PHP on top and you've got your actual application logic, say, a closure-based controller on the bottom. So if normally you just throw one file, um, your index.php down, throw your logic right next to it, and execute it. So this code actually runs without errors. No big deal. Moving along. Oh, before I actually move along, you'll notice that I have a closure called display and that actually renders my response. It's a better practice to buffer your template before rendering it, so if you need to throw an error, you don't end up with a page that's half rendered and then throw the error halfway through, and it just really looks ugly. But let's say I was not paying attention to my IDE and added an extra closing bracket. This will trigger a parse error when this file is loaded. Note that I intentionally had my logic in a different file because a parse error in one file won't bring down execution on anything else that you include. So my index.php is fine and the other files I include is fine. This is really important for handling errors so that you can, for example, have your nice dependency injected error handling classes and they'll be unscathed when you have that nasty parse error happening. So right now, this will just return the white screen of death. Let's go ahead and fix that by adding a shutdown handler. Now what this does is when your script ends, it will always call this. Even if there's a 500 earth-shattering parse error, you'll still get a call to this. Now, it is this function's job to do any cleanup that you need to do. In this case, I'm checking to see whether the error actually exists, and if so, whether it's a fatal. 
at the top there. Uh, I copy and pasted that lovely uh, bunch of ores from Brandon Savage's error handling library that I'll mention later. So in this case, if I have an error and if it is fatal, go ahead and display a little bit of text there and set a header. Again, the index.php file is unscathed, so I can use what I declared over there, which in this case was a quick closure to display my output. Now, you probably don't want to be sending the error handling uh, information down to your client unless you're using something like FirePHP uh, or one of your other client-side inspectors, but for the purposes of this presentation, we're just showing that dollar display will actually still work. Now there are a couple of gotchas here. First off, you don't necessarily have to uh, take this uh, shutdown function to use uh, to actually catch your errors if you're using Facebook HHVM. Um, HHVM may not support a couple edge cases on PHP, but one thing that it does support with the configuration option is throwing all errors at the error handler function, which we'll talk about later, with a special error code so you can tell, oh, this is an error that this end runtime would not normally catch. Additionally, your shutdown handler has to give a response code back and manually set that using your HTTP underscore response code or something to that effect, because otherwise you end up having an internal server error in a 200 as your response, and that's just no good. So for exceptions, right now I haven't changed anything in my bootstrap file, I haven't changed anything in my handler beyond what I just showed. So this runtime exception will go uncaught. And because I set the shutdown handler, it'll still catch because a, uh, it'll register as a fatal error uh, as an uncaught exception. However, we can do a little bit better than that. We add to our error handling code, set exception handler. This also takes a function which you can specify using a string or an array just like you would say in an array map. So you can take that exception, pull useful information out of it, for example send it to a logger or send it um, to any other thing that you can think of pull bits of information out and display as needed. Now, you might actually want to catch notices and do something interesting with them other than just logging them to var log whatever. In that case, you'll want to set a error handler. Now, this is a function that takes error level, which is an integer, uh, e underscore whatever are your constants there, a message, a file, and a line number. And then you can handle that as needed. In this case, the second argument of set error handler will actually tell you or tell the runtime which errors to hand off. In this case, all I'm doing is catching notices. And with those notices, I go ahead and log them. Now, in many cases, you'll just catch everything and decide what to do with those errors uh, once you've caught them. Now, similarly to your shutdown function, uh, you need to handle fatals, including setting that HTTP response code. Otherwise, it's 200 and 500 territory again and you don't want that. Also, unless your error handler returns false, PHP's error handling logic will be short-circuited, so you have to do all of it. So, with all of that said, there are a few things that diverge between my examples and how you'll actually implement this in real life. You'll probably use a class rather than a bunch of closures to implement your handling, and you probably will pass off your uh, shutdown handling to your error handler uh, function. So while your error handler function on 
actually attaching it to the runtime will not normally catch your fatals. Shutdown function will, and you can reformat your error message and drop it into your error handler that way. And that big old uh, board E underscore or fatal, E underscore core error, et cetera, can be put as a, um, a protected constant uh, variable at the top of your class, which that can be done uh, unaltered in PHP 5, 6, or more, which allows uh, constant expressions. Now, you saw the uh, trivial logger that I was showing there, and of course you'll want to do more than that. Use a logging class, and you probably want to use something that conforms to standards such as PSR3. So the big logger in that case would be monolog. You may also want to throw request and response information into that logger and generate a unique ID that refers to that request uh, for error handling. The cool thing that you can do if you do that is, uh, for example, in an API response, include a log reference in the error response. In that way, when somebody calls support, and says, I got a 500 and this is why, or this is the uh, error log ref that I was given, then you can look that up in your logging solution, whether that's a database because you don't have any traffic or in a dedicated logging solution because you do, and say, oh, that was due to an exception or error in this line. Let me go fix that. Additionally, if you have a full-on uh, logging solution in your application, then you can tie in alerts, such as the aforementioned texting and emailing me when we get a 500. So I can fix it before uh, my project owners get a hold of me and say, we have an issue here. Lastly, you probably don't want to build this yourself unless you're really interested in pursuing a custom solution. So uh, if you go to these slides, both of these bullet points are linked. The first one, I believe, will be inducted into the League of Extraordinary PHP Packages relatively soon. And the second one is what Laravel 4 used for its error handling. So if you want to use something as inspiration or just want to use the package straight up, these are really good options to take a look at. And with that, I'll open it up for questions. That is the end of my presentation. My uh, joined-in link is on screen as is a link to the slides. Thank you for listening, and I'll look at IRC for any questions. We don't have any questions, so thanks for joining us for another Nomad PHP Lightning Talk. If you'd like to give a Lightning Talk, please email me, joe at nomadphp.com. Please make sure you visit, join in, and leave Ian some feedback. Thanks a lot, Ian.